Parenting Junkie. Hey guys, welcome back to The Parenting Junkie, the place to go to love parenting and for parenting from love. Today I want to talk about the six stages of development and how we as parents can facilitate each of these stages for maximum emotional health and wholeness. And where I have learned these is from the wonderful Dr. Harvel Hendricks, and here's an example of one of his books, Keeping the Love You Find. Okay, so the first uh, thing we're going to look at is the six stages of development. And um, what's important to remember is that in each of these stages, we could potentially, uh, as caregivers, wound our children, um, wound their wholeness, two ways, okay? The first way we could wound them is by being true intrusive, by being too controlling, by being too enmeshed and attached and in their face and not giving them the space to be them. So that's when someone is too much on top of someone else. And the other way we could wound them is by being too neglectful, by not being there, by not seeing them, by not uh, meeting their needs. The first stage is from about the age of zero to 18 months. And all of these stages can overlap and he teaches them in chronological order, but it could really uh, not be so strictly in this order. But the first stage is attachment. And we know from so much research, and one of the best places to learn about this is from Dr. Daniel Siegel in Parenting from the Inside Out and in all of his other work about the science of the brain. Um, we know that the attachment phase is so deeply critical to future emotional health. So having a baby who is securely attached is a prerequisite uh, to growing up feeling uh, secure and, um, and safe. Now, there are four different types of attachment that Dr. Daniel Siegel talks about, and we'll talk about those in a separate video. But the one we want to focus on is creating a secure attachment. And a secure attachment at this stage happens when a baby, an infant, from the day they are born, experiences their caregiver as a reliable source of comfort and getting their needs met in a timely fashion and uh, connection, right? Their need for touch, their need for safety, their need for food, their need for comfort, uh, their need for soothing. All of the different needs that we need to meet for a baby, if a baby is getting those needs met reliably and predictably and t in a timely fashion from a secure, loving caregiver, then they won't be wounded uh, in the attachment phase. If a baby experiences neglect at this stage, where their needs, needs aren't being met or they're being met in a chaotic and erratic way, then they will have a wound from this attachment phase. So what we want to focus on here is really allowing that baby to be fully dependent on us. And I'm just going to put in brackets, big brackets here, the whole topic of teaching a baby to cry, uh, to sleep and crying it out versus not crying out versus co-sleeping, etc. It's an important topic, it's relevant, but it's for another uh, session because um, what I really want to focus on here is the secure attachment which can be achieved whilst also teaching a baby to sleep and whilst also having some level of crying but any uh, type that, time that we abandon a child that we neglect a child uh, that we aren't attuned that we don't naturally mirror back their feelings like oh I see you're sad oh I see you're hungry yes I'm fixing you a bottle yes I'm going to nurse you yes I'm going to hold you let me pick you up and kiss you because you got hurt um, let me hold you because you need comfort and um, all of those things when we're not mirroring that back that creates the wound in this phase so the attachment phase is all about uh, infancy up until toddlerhood is all about creating a secure attachment. The next stage is from about 18 months till about three years old. I've actually found it earlier in my children. And this is the exploration stage. This is the stage where children start to realize, hey, wait a minute, I'm separate from that caregiver and I can go off and explore the world and I can even do things that they don't want me to do. I have my own will and my own curiosity and my own drive. So this is the stage that we commonly and sadly refer to as the terrible twos. But in fact, it's an exciting and wonderful time in a child's life where they start to come into their power and into their curiosity about the world. So if we want no wounds in this stage, the job of the caregiver in toddlerhood is to facilitate and support the exploration of the child and the differentiation of the child. So not to shame the child for having those urges, for having those drives. And I highly recommend watching my video about schema entitled The Real Play Your Child Needs, Your Toddler Needs, because 
Um, we need to understand the urges and drives of this stage and realize that they're not an attack on us. They're not a rebellion. Um, they're not. Um, they're not bad. They're not misbehavior. They're natural, normal, and important stage of development. And if we keep our child safe by primarily manipulating the environment, baby proofing, making sure that they can be in the environment without hurting themselves to a fair degree, and then giving them the freedom uh, to explore curiously and to, to explore their different schemas, then uh, hopefully differentiation will be established healthily and they can move on to the next stage of development without wounds in the exploration state. What happens when someone is wounded in this stage because their parent was too intrusive, okay? So they stopped them, they didn't let them uh, explore. They kept saying, no, you can't do this, don't touch that, don't go here, don't go there, and they really um, limited their curiosity, is that maybe that child will then go on to be a huge risk taker, uh, to be um, extra uh, negligent about about safety, to be uh, crazy, you know, extreme sports or, um, or, or, or drugs or taking risks with their health. Whereas if the opposite is true, maybe uh, if they, if we didn't, um, if we didn't keep them safe and if we were neglectful, we weren't intrusive, we were neglectful, we just let them do whatever they want and they kept getting hurt, um, then maybe uh, they might grow up to be timid uh, and feel scared of risk and feel that they have to conform and stay very, very safe all the time because no one's going to take care of them. So our job here is to help keep them safe but also support their curiosity. The next stage is from the ages from about three to four years, so kind of preschool age. And this is the stage where children start to explore their sense of self and their identity, who they are in the world. And the way that they usually do this is by taking on and acting out different identities. So pretending to be Superman, Spider-Man, a rhinoceros, a dinosaur, a ballerina, putting on capes, wearing mommy's shoes and daddy's hats and holding your handbag and saying, I'm Batman. Um, and what happens in this stage is they need to feel safe to explore their identity. We need to allow them to have that exploration and to even support them in it um, so that they can come through that stage unwounded with a secure sense of self, of who they are, uh, of their themness. Um, and what sometimes happens is that we intrude on this on this process by saying, put that down, stop wearing that, don't stop pretending to be things all the time, you're you, don't be, uh, you know, don't be imagining uh, different things, don't be pretending to be other things and not allowing them to have their imaginary world, which can hinder their, uh, which can, you know, be a wound in this stage of exploring the self and getting their own identity so that they learn that being themselves and exploring different facets of their character is dangerous, isn't accepted in their primary relationship with their caregiver, and um, they will forever be shutting down parts of themselves so as to be accepted by others. Or on the other end of the spectrum, they might feel like they need to go uh, very, very loud and big and um, extreme in their identity. Uh, they would need to, you know, make it everything, uh, make it very visible, uh, make it very um, obstructive to uh, other relationships, make it uh, the main focus of their life because they don't feel secure in who their identity really is. The next stage is from about the ages of four to about the age of seven. And this is the stage of competence, the stage where children come into mastery and ownership of the process of learning and growing. And in this stage, uh, children will typically want to be thirsty uh, for information, for um, skills, uh, to practice things, to learn to read, to learn to write, to learn uh, maths, uh, to learn uh, all sorts of basic skills and things to do for themselves, kind of a little bit of growing up. And um, in this stage, if we want there not to be a wound around competence, we need to support their process, facilitating their growth and allowing them to take some risks and learn how to do things on their own and at their own pace and in their own style. So making their own meals, uh, choosing their own clothes, learning uh, skills like reading and writing, um, fixing things, building things, uh, studying new information, um, reading new books, etc. 
and in this stage they uh, they want mastery they want a sense not only of self and identity as they had in the previous stage but also a sense of competence of their ability to do things in the world and to manipulate the world in the way that they uh, they need in order to advance so if we don't want to wound our children at this stage we need to support that and allow them that and often we want to shut it down because it's it's too hard for us it takes us too much time to let them do things on their own or too much investment for them to learn things on their own um, and it's hard for us to support that process or alternatively we're not there to facilitate at all we're like well you do it on yourself i'm you know i'm done i'm not here i'm neglectful in that case rather than intrusive i'm, I'm neglectful i'm stepping out and then they learn that their mastery and their growth isn't important to us and we won't help them in a way that they still need the adult help so we want to hit that balance of being there for them but also transferring the responsibility of competence over to them the next stage is from the ages of seven till about 13. And this is the stage where social groups begin to form and children begin to care about having a, a social group, uh, often of same sex friends, um, and having that best friend uh, cliqueiness becomes a problem in this time because this is the chapter of concern and concern for others and understanding what others think about us, what others say about us, what we think and feel about others. And in this stage, children need to be allowed and supported in exploring a peer group and in having peer connections and um, actually developing relationships with friends, friendships that last, um, that are you know longer than just the play date here and there. So in this stage, if we don't want them to have any wounds in the sense of forming friendships, they need to learn to navigate, um, you know, cliqueiness ostracization, bullying, teasing, um, all of the things that come with a peer group and a social group. And they still need the adult support, that caring, affirming, attuned adult who cares and reflects back for them their experience and helps them learn uh, to seek out the friendships that are healthy and affirming for them and not those that are harming them. This is the stage where children learn to express their need for space or togetherness, closeness or apartness. Uh, they need to be able to be inclusive and share their feelings. So they need a safe platform where they're allowed and encouraged to be sharing of their internal experience socially. Finally, the stage, uh, the sixth stage of childhood which develops between the ages of 13 and 19. And this is where a first love uh, will, uh, will occur or a crush and an intimate interest in, uh, in a partner and the, uh, the ability to um, safely create a relationship and be in a, a relationship with another person. This is a stage where sexuality develops and here children will explore uh, the ability to love and be loved by another. So kind of surviving their first love, their first crush, their first sexual interest and encounter uh, during uh, these years. And finally, when they grow up, when we grow up, uh, Hopefully, if they can go through all of those stages unwounded, then they'll be responsible uh, to themselves and to others. So these are the six stages of development as taught by Dr. Harville Hendricks. And what we need to remember is that as parents, it's actually acutely important. It's really very important that we realize what's going on in these stages and attune to the needs of our children in each of these stages so that we're neither intrusive nor neglectful so that we're there and present and available for our children to support them in their endeavors without being too enmeshed and too controlling or too absent and uh, you know abandoning and if we can do that then they can proceed through these six stages of development without being wounded if you like this video and it was interesting for you then head on over to the parenting junkie and sign up for email updates click the subscribe button here on youtube the parenting junkie